Praise the Lord and welcome once again to Greater Atlanta Healing Temple Sunday School Session. We thank you for joining us. Again, this is Greater Atlanta Healing Temple. We are an apostolic church located at 1332 Holcomb Avenue in East Point, Georgia. And we invite you to come and worship the Lord in spirit and in truth with us. We are starting our Sunday School lesson today, and our lesson for today is entitled, Daniel's Friends Trust God. Daniel's Friends Trust God. Let us pray. Almighty and most gracious Father, we thank you for another day. We thank you for another week. We thank you for your word, your saving word, your healing word, your delivering word, your word of truth. We ask, O oh God, that you help us to hide your word in our hearts. Help us to rightly and truthfully divide your word, O oh God, and keep us in your care. Bless, Lord, our listeners this, today. Now, we just thank you, and we give your name the highest praise in Jesus' name. Amen. Once again, Pastor Smith and Greater Atlanta Healing Temple, we said, God bless you. Our Sunday School lesson for today is entitled, as I said earlier, Daniel's Friends Trust God. And we are studying a series of lessons dealing with Daniel and his three Hebrew friends, Meshach, Mesh, uh, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, and their encounter with the world that is the heathen world of the Babylonian Empire and how they responded and gives us insight into how we as Christians, as saved children of God today should respond uh, to the cultural influences that are beckoning us. Amen. I also, we will start, and our text for today is found in the book of Daniel, chapter 3. Again, yes, Daniel chapter 3, verses 19 through 28. Then was Nebuchadnezzar full of fury, and the form of his visage had changed against Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. Therefore he spake and commanded that they should heat the furnace seven times more than it was wont to be heated. And he commanded the most mighty men that were in his army to bind Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego and to cast them into the burning fiery furnace. Then these men were bound in their coats their hosen, their hats, and their outer garments, and were cast into the midst of the burning, fiery furnace. Therefore, because the king's commandment was urgent, and the furnace exceeding hot, the flame of the fire slew those men that took up Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. And these three men, Shadrach, Meshach and Abednego fell down bound into the midst of the burning fiery furnace. Then Nebuchadnezzar the king was astonished and rose up in haste and spake and said unto his counselors, Did not we cast three men bound into the midst of the fire? They answered unto the king, True, O king. He answered and said, Lo, I see four men loose walking in the midst of the fire, and they have no hurt, and the form of the fourth is like the Son of God. Then Nebuchadnezzar came near to the mouth of the burning fiery furnace and spake, and said, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, you servants of the Most High God, 
come forth and come hither. Then Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego came forth of the midst of the fire. And the princes, governors, and captains, and the king's counselors, being gathered together, saw these men upon whom, whose bodies the fire had no power, nor was a hair of their head singed, neither were their coats changed, nor the smell of fire had passed on them. Then Nebuchadnezzar spake and said, Blessed be the God of Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, who has sent his angel and delivered his servants that trusted in him and have changed the king's word and yielded their bodies that they might not serve nor worship any god except their own god. Oh, look at God's work. Now, what we are studying in our series of lessons dealing with Daniel and the three Hebrew boys, Daniel, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, is that after they have been brought into a strange heathen land whose custom was not to serve the true God, but to serve idol gods. And we read uh, last Sunday where the king had a huge, tall sculpture, a uh, statue built for all of the people to bow down and worship. Let's stop for a moment and let's look at some numbers. The statue was 60 cubits tall. Keep in mind, 60, 60 cubits tall. And it was six cubits wide. What do, uh, do those numbers uh, bring to mind? Uh, keep in mind, even then during creation, on the sixth day, God made man. So now here the king has had a big statue of a man constructed 60 cubits tall, 6 cubits wide. And now we fast forward to the future when the man of perdition is going, whose number is going to be 666 six, six, and he's going to want people to worship him uh, and everybody that take the mark of that beast will not be saved. So you see a, a, a similarity of King Nebuchadnezzar trying to get people to worship this statue, 60 cubits tall, 6 cubits wide. And then in the future, the number of the man of perdition, the beast, 666. So this is why we are teaching people the word of God that we should worship no one except the true God. And we better make sure we get a good grip on him because the time is coming. And I believe it's here very soon when people are going to be required to take the mark of the beast whose number is 666. And they're going to need to do that in order to buy or sell. So in essence, they're going to be uh, bowing down to this false god. So in our lesson today, as we started out last Sunday, these three Hebrew boys, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, did not bow down. When the music was played, everybody in the land was supposed to get down, bow down, and worship this tall statue, false god that Nebuchadnezzar had built. These three Hebrew boys because they served the true and the living God. They were not afraid of man. They chose to obey God, even risking their lives. And we will see in today's lesson how God
took notice of their dedication, their faithfulness to him, and their obedience to him, and having no other God before him, and how it resulted in their miraculous redemption. When Nebuchadnezzar got word that these three Hebrew boys refused to obey his orders and bow down to this image that he had had created and worship it. These three Hebrew boys knew the true God's law, one of his first commandments, thou should have no other God before me, because he was the only one and true living God. We must keep God's word in our hearts and the reason a lot of people are getting in trouble today because we have let other idol gods take place of the true and living God in our life. He has lost first priority and we have placed other things, our jobs, our family, our loved ones, different things we have placed ahead of God and the culture of this world, the standards of this world, which are contrary to the standards of God. And a lot of people have put those standards above God's standard. And as a result, we are in a mess. So these three Hebrew boys did not. And when King Nebuchadnezzar found that out, he was angry. And his response was to find some of the strongest men in his army to get Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego and bind them up. And before they did that, he told them the furnace. They had a big furnace and he said, I want you to make it hot. Seven times hotter than it usually is. And that reminds me of in our day and time, we may not be put into a literal furnace of fire, but we are going through our trials by fire if we live right. The Bible says, yea, if any man will live godly, he shall suffer persecution. And that's what a lot of the people of God are afraid of. They don't want to suffer. They don't want to be ridiculed. They don't want to be talked about. They don't want people saying that they are different. So they try to blend in. And when we blend in with the world, we lose out with God. The world's standards is not our standard. The world says you can drink and have sex with anybody you want and whenever you want to. You can smoke and you can get drunk and you can party and do all this crazy stuff. And then... Go to church on Sunday morning. God said, be holy for he is holy. So the world okays things that God does not approve of. So the Hebrew boys decide, we are not going to do what you say, king, because it's against what we believe. You cannot compromise your Christian belief just to please the world. That's when you get in trouble with God. So the king told his men, heat up the furnace seven times hotter than it normally gets. And then he looked out and found his strongest men in the army. So now go get those three Hebrew boys. <coughs> Excuse me. <laughs> tie their hands. Tie them up. And throw them in the furnace. Now look what happened. Then, therefore, verse 22, because the king's commandment was urgent. When the king gave a commandment, you better move. You have to do it when he said and move when he said and do it like he said, or you risk losing your life. So these men, the king told them, clothes and all, even with their clothes on, their shoes and all, throw them in the furnace of fire. So here we have my uh, illustration here it says a bold faith. Let me ask a question. How bold is your faith? How bold is my faith? 
Are we willing to stand up when people ask us to lie to get extra money on your job? Are you a padding your hours? Or are you uh, cheating? Or are you lying for food stamps or whatever? That's what the world says is okay. God does not say that. So we must be bold enough to trust God. I was subject to say, Daniel's friend, trust God. Look now, think about it. They were facing being thrown into a furnace of fire. Those who are looking at my uh, illustration, look at all that hot fire. Red, yellow, orange flames. And they are thrown into the fire, fully clothed, bound, hands bound. But look what happened. When God sees that we really believe him, he saw that these three Hebrew boys, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, stood up to the king and said, Our king is the true God of heaven and earth. And that for that reason, they were thrown in the furnace of fire. Now, the fire was so hot that the men who threw them in, let's see what it says. The flame of the fire slew the men that threw them in. Now watch how God's work. He will take care of your enemies, of our enemies, if we simply stand on his word, how great is your faith in God? How bold is your faith? Will you believe God if it costs you your job? Will you trust and obey God if it costs you extra money? If it costs you friendship, sometimes even family. But God wants to be first and he wants us to obey him at all costs. So the three Hebrew boys, because they refused to bow down and worship the king's image that he had created, they were thrown in the furnace of fire. That was very hot, hotter than it normally is. Again, the men that the king had to throw them in the fire, they the one, the fire killed them. But then the king saw something miraculous and something that was just had his eyes wide open and caught his attention. Those three Hebrew boys were thrown in this flaming furnace with all their clothes and shoes when they should have been burning up, maybe screaming, trying to get out. When the king looked, he got closer and he saw, then we, and he asked his servant, he said, didn't we put three people in that fire, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego? And they said, yes, true. He said, but I see four. Ah, look what this heathen king said, one who worshiped false idols. He said, and the fourth one looks like the son of God. <clears throat> now, take that from someone who don't even worship the true God. But guess what? He had to recognize the true God because he knew only the true God could save these three Hebrew boys and he himself would in fact with him. So when we are getting in our trouble, when our trials and our tribulations come, if we stay with God, if we trust him and obey him and believe him, he will not only not always put the fire out, but he will get in the fire with you and make it bearable for you when your enemies are looking and wondering, how in the world did they do that? And they are the one who will suffer, who had planned mischief against us. But the king said, the fourth one I see look like the son of God. And then he went, he said, look, something different about this. 
So he went closer and he said, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, come here. And when they came out of the fire, Everybody expecting them to be burned and the hair on fire, the clothes smelling like fire and smoke. But the king took notice. Their clothes still look good. They didn't even smell like fire. No smoke on them. Not even a, uh, their hair was burned. If we trust God, he will get in the fire with us. Jesus will be in our trials with us. He said, I will never leave you nor forsake you. We have to trust God and there are going to come times when we are going to be trial by fire. When I say trial by fire, sometimes we're going to have a situation and we're going to wonder, where did this come from? God never promised his children that we would not suffer, that we would not have uh, any bad day. But he did promise, I will be with you until the end of the world. So when we are going through, take note that you're not alone. Jesus is going through with you. And so the smell of fire hadn't even touched them. Now they're in the midst of all this fire and smoke and it had it didn't even phase them. It had no effect on them at all. The men who were outside of the fire, who threw them in the fire, they are the one who died. That shows you God at work and God recognizing the faith, the boldness of these three Hebrew boys, their dedication to him. How dedicated are you to God? Do you just go to church when things are going well, when you got money and you got grocery? Or will when things get tough, you still will face God and said, I will be with God. I won't buy, um, back down. I will not buy on to the devil. I am going to stay with God. So Nebuchadnezzar, when he saw God at work, he had to take note that this was God working with the three Hebrew boys. And he called all the people together and he started speaking. He said, now, Blessed be the God that they serve, the God of Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. He said, because that God, the living God, has sent his angel and has delivered his servant. They didn't serve the king. They didn't serve that uh, false golden image. They served the true God of heaven and earth. And because they did, King Nebuchadnezzar had to take note that their God was the true God and that these three boys, the Hebrew boys, were servants of the true God. And he said that God had sent his angels and have changed the king's word. In other words, the king had said, if you don't bow down to me, I'm going to put you to death. Well, the king's word fell to the ground. Because God did not let these boys die. God did not let them even get hurt. But he got in the fire with them and protected them because they were his servants. And he said, and they have yielded their bodies to God. They have made that promise, I will not serve anybody or worship any other God except their own God. So the king noticed that when the, the, time, the times got hard, that that did not stop the Hebrew boys in the face of their lives, risking dying. That did not stop them from serving the true God. That did not stop them. They said, okay, we are not care for the answer in this matter. If I, we serve the true God and if our God, he is able, he will deliver us. And even if he don't deliver us and it's his will for us to go ahead and die, we will not bow down to your false God. People of God, let's not bow down to the world. Let's not bow down to their standards. Let's not give in to Satan's tricks. Let's stay with God. 
even if it means that we may not have steaks and potatoes every day. We may not have a refrigerator full of groceries every day. We might not have the money in our pocket sometimes to pay the bills. But whatever situation we find ourselves in, if we do like the Hebrew boys and show bold faith and say like they said, we will not bow. We are not giving in, Satan. We will not obey you. Then God will show up and let your enemies know that he is with us. But what he wants, he's looking for somebody now that will stand up to the truth. That will stand up for what's right. Can he trust you? Can he trust me? It's up to us to do like these Hebrew boys did and represent God to the world. Show the world that God is real and God does not lie. He promised to take care of his children and he will if we do like these Hebrew boys and not bow down to the world's standard. If we stay with God, as he said, thou shalt have no other gods before me. Don't put money, don't put job, don't put family, don't put friends above God. At the top of the list should be God. Let's serve him because he is God and God alone. There are a lot of little gods on the, in the world, but the true big living God the God of the Hebrew boys is still alive and he wants you and he wants me to be dedicated, real committed, not just sometimes church people when we feel like it, but committed, dedicated. We will not bow to Satan because our God is true God. So those are Daniel's friends, just like Daniel. They trusted God. Amen. So next Sunday, we want you to continue with us as we continue another lesson about Daniel, where Daniel prophesies about uh, Jesus, prophesies about God. And we want you to follow us because these lessons are interesting. And if we study God's word and get in God's word, and look at how it applies to our lives today. We can make it. God will strengthen us. So next Sunday's lesson is entitled, Daniel prophesies the son of man. Daniel prophesies the son of man. That lesson is found in the book of Daniel, chapter 7, verses 9 through 14. Daniel chapter 7, 9 through 14. Amen. And so we thank God for you. And if this lesson, our this these lesson series have been a blessing or encouraging to you, feel free to uh, hold help us keep this ministry going with your generous donation. Greater Atlanta Healing Temple Church, Post Office Box 490-274, Atlanta, Georgia, 30349. Lord God, we thank you for your word of truth. Lord, we thank you for your encouragement and for your people. We pray special blessings on this week that you keep us in your care in Jesus' name. God bless you.